I'm allowed to have plans on my birthday. It's your birthday? Yes. I knew that. Already? Yeah, isn't that strange? It's the same day as last year. Come on, get yourself something nice for me. I already did. And? Oh, it was very nice. Yeah. Very tasteful. Thank you, Mr. Stark. You're welcome, Miss Potts. We all tend to overprotect our identities. It's a natural aspect whenever we involve ourselves with the world. Because to keep our own ideas of ourselves intact, it requires managing negative feedback. Gergen and Gergen called this management process self-maintenance strategies. It's actions like when we mix with people that are already similar like ourselves or from a lower status or ability. She's cute. She's all right. Hi. Hi. We can also consciously provoke the feedback we want and form low opinions of anyone who criticizes us. Hearing. Tell me, do you plan to report on the millions we've saved by advancing medical technology or kept from starvation? All those breakthroughs, military funding. And before we're introduced to Pepper Potts, all of these tactics are employed in Tony Stark's interview with the first woman we see him with. You ever lose an hour of sleep your whole life? Be prepared to lose a few with you. His dalliance with the reporter is deeply symbolic of how his world is filtered. Because any level of scrutiny is bounced off from his rehearsed strategies. But then the story immediately contrasts this relationship with Pepper Potts who is the only person who can and is willing to penetrate through Tony's barriers. Please don't turn down my music. Pepper's profession as Tony's personal assistant demands her to persevere and bypass his tactics to the extent that their first encounter is shaped around her simply telling him he's late for his plane and ignoring the justifications he's trying to make. Your flight was scheduled to leave an hour and a half ago. That's funny. I thought with it being my plane and all, that it would just wait for me to get Tony, there. Tony, I need to speak to you about a couple of things before I get you out of the I mean, door. Therefore, immediately in the first few moments between these characters, we understand that within Tony's world of the heavily filtered and protected, she's the only marker for authenticity because she's unwilling to surrender to his self-maintenance strategies. So the purpose of this essay is to examine the thematic meaning behind Pepper Potts' character and how her function as the grounding presence in Tony's journey is used as a storytelling tool. So yeah, it should be fun. <laughs> Join me. I want one. No. You know, just so we're talking about the same thing. Time travel. Pepper Potts is symbolic of how engaged Tony is with his reality because before his change and even after it, she's the most dependable person in his life. Ever ask me to do anything like that ever again? I, I don't have anyone. Therefore, she narratively functions as a checkpoint marker, a simple thematic tool to highlight the little developments in Tony's identity. He first starts out disinterested in engaging meaningfully in his own life from not accepting his award because he was way too busy gambling to being late to his own private plane because he was busy working on his car. So. As he becomes more and more responsible and engaged, his connection with Pepper gets stronger and stronger, to the extent that when he comes back to America, he discloses everything to her. I just finally know what I have to do. This is represented by the way they address each other as Miss Potts and Mr. Stark. They first say it as a means to avoid any unprofessional proximity. Thank you, Mr. Stark. You're welcome, Miss Potts. Then, after the arc reactor replacement scene, they say it's because it's the expected etiquette. Will that be all, Mr. Stark? That will be all, Miss Potts. Then, in their final moment, this exchange is a direct euphemism for something more. Will that be all? Yes, Mr. Stark. that will be all, Miss Potts. As a result, the monument of Tony's old arc reactor is not only about the seismic change in Tony's life after the events of the cave, but is also an expression of Pepper's impact on his life. Tony would have died again without her, and his change wouldn't have been as bearable without someone as important as her recognizing it. 
So whatever happens, she's his connection to a reality that feels authentic, which is what they bond deeply over in their argument. I cannot help you if you're going to start all of this again. There is nothing except this. For one moment, the formality is gone, and there's nothing but a naked sense of understanding. You're all I have too, you know. And this nakedness is expanded upon entering into Iron Man 2 as a point of conflict. Tony falls back into old habits again, and one of the first thing he does is get rid of Pepper by promoting her. I hereby irrevocably appoint you chairman and CEO of Stark Industries, effective immediately. Which on one hand is a secret cry for help because he wants her to look after him even more since he's secretly dying, but it's also his old self-maintenance strategies coming back. Their first big scene together is him disbelieving of what Pepper is saying, and once she's not around him at all, Tony has more space to self-handicap. You know, the question I get asked most often is, Tony, how do you go to the bathroom in the suit? Just like that. Therefore, his failures psychologically can be used purposely as a form of protection for his self-esteem. In other words, Tony distances himself from Pepper so he doesn't have to live in the reality of his life. But in the end, they end up together, finally, because while he was busy destroying himself and had so many arguments with her, she kept his world together. People are relying on you to be Iron Man and you disappeared and all I'm doing is putting out your fires and taking the heat for it. This kiss is Tony re-engaging his relationship with the world and is Pepper expressing her capacity to persevere through all his nonsense. Moving into the beyond, Pepper Potts doesn't just serve as the gravity that stabilizes Tony's engagement with his world, but she also represents home now too. She ascended in Iron Man 1 and 2 because just as Tony improved as a person from her presence, she also finds great purpose through him. Well, I'm just seeing to recharge our batteries and, and figure it all out. Not everybody runs on batteries, Tony. There are multiple dialogue scenes that detail that she's been working for him for decades. His life is her life, and her life is his life. But I could fire you if I had to take the edge off. I don't, I actually don't think that you could tie your shoes without me. I'd make it a week. Really? Sure. What's your social security number? They were a married couple before they were even married. It's a connection that started on a professional level and very quickly penetrated inwards into the private thoughts of each other because by nature, it was always deeply indissoluble. And in the Avengers, this inseparable dynamic is made fun of by the 12% joke. You give yourself 12% the credit. 12%? An argument can be made for 15. And when Tony was about to accept his death, he wanted to listen to her voice one last time. Entering into Iron Man 3, one of the interesting directions the story takes is that it contextualizes the solution from the previous film and turns it into a new obstacle for the characters. Tony went from implicitly discarding Pepper to worshipping her in such a way that it actually disrupts his connection with reality. After seeing a universe that makes him feel powerless, Tony depends on two new maintenance strategies in order to protect his sense of self. He's got an armory of suits and he's got Pepper. The threat is imminent and I have to protect the one thing that I can't live without. That's you. Both are used as barriers to keep his own idea of himself intact, but this overprotection is what alienates Pepper. So we catch my breath. Hey, don't, don't go, all right? Pepper. I wanna see downstairs. Tinker with that. By seeing Tony distracted to the point that she devolves into a trophy for him, it creates a schism. Therefore, at the end, Tony has to make a choice. It's either Pepper or the suits. And of course he picks Pepper. So his myopia is dissipated by his new commitment to his reality. Iron Man 3 is similar to Captain America Civil War and Thor Ragnarok in the sense that even though all three characters' respective arcs don't end with the final installment of their trilogies, the importance of the film comes from the epoch that it captures. 
Each story is about a choice that determines their final destinations in Endgame. Thor had to let go of his kingdom so he could become a traveller. Steve had to let go of the shield to be willing to earn his happiness. And Tony had to pick Pepper over his old habits, be it the suits, the arc reactor and his lonely island, to care about the world enough to die for it. From this moment onward, Tony, just like Thor and Steve, are effectively new characters following new values. Which is now symbolized by how Tony distributes his concerns more altruistically. All of your projects have just been approved and funded. He builds Ultron so the world won't need him. He serves the Sokovian Accords out of the concern of the unrepresented. And he fathers Peter Parker so there's a future even after he's gone. We don't see Pepper Potts for much of this phase, instead she's always talked about. Ladies, gentlemen. Oh, Miss Potts has a company to run. Which on one hand is probably because they couldn't get Gwyneth Paltrow, but it also shows the imprint of her symbolic value in Tony's life. In the same way that the first arc reactor was decorated by her statement, Tony continues to be this heartfelt human being that she sees in him even if it's not exactly who she wants him to be right now. A few years ago, I almost lost her, so I trashed all my suits. And we had to mop up Hydra, and then Ultron. My fault. And then, and then, and then, I never stopped, because the truth is I don't want to stop. He's constantly working towards it. See trusses, and that's it. Just in case there's a monster in the closet, instead of, you know. Shirts. You know me so well. So after Tony fights Thanos and loses, he returns back to her and gets his happy ending. So thematically, this whole time, the big pains of his life came from a congestion in his journey. Tony described the suit and subsequently his inventions as a cocoon in Iron Man 3. It was a cocoon. A mechanism used to develop his identity. But that preoccupation with the future ironically disconnected him from being able to build meaningful things in the present. He could have had Morgan a long time ago if he wasn't building Ultron. Therefore, Pepper was the compass that stopped him from drifting away. So then, when Tony figures out how to time travel, he needs her permission. He needs to know that, just as he did so many times, he's not going to fall back into his bad habits. I can put a pin in it right now. And stop. Tony, trying to get you to stop has been one of the few failures of my entire life. But in the end, Pepper says, you, you can, can rest now. Which is her comforting Tony as much as it's her simply accepting the inevitable. This is a moment that she saw the second she caught Tony in the suit because just as Tony threw away his morning working on his car for no reason, Tony's natural character is to set himself a target and get there regardless of the damage to himself. We're gonna be okay. Pepper Potts' purpose in life was to mitigate it, but in this one small moment where she puts her hand on his arc reactor, she understands that it wasn't about stopping him, but giving him context. In Tony's funeral, his arc reactor, decorated by Pepper, is the monument that drifts in the river, and it encapsulates that throughout Tony's journey, Pepper is more than a character, but a symbolic embodiment of his entire world. She is the meaning that grounded him, once a figure that bypassed his self-maintenance strategies, then actually became his self-maintenance strategy, and then in the end, she became both. Pepper could pop Tony's bubble, as much as she ensured that it was protected. And I think in a lot of ways, we're all like Tony and Pepper. We all need something to ground us. We all need that connection towards authenticity to assure that what we do corresponds with something we need. But would you be able to rest? Some people find it with what they do, but for Tony and Pepper, they find it in each other. Pepper Potts is a great character. Let's hope we don't see her selling vagina smelling candles like her live action counterpart. Mm -hmm.